the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that though in our weakness we fail, we may be revived through the passion of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God, to comfort all who mourn, to place on those who mourn in Zion a diadem instead of ashes, to give them oil of gladness in place of mourning, a glorious mantle instead of a listless spirit. You yourselves shall be named priests of the Lord, ministers of our God, you shall be called. I will give them their response faithfully, a lasting covenant I will make with them. Their descendants shall be renowned among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them as a race the Lord has blessed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace, one body and one spirit, as you are also called to the one hope of your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. The word of the Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends 
because I have told you everything I have heard from my Father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you, and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain Dennis Jones, our brother, to the responsibility of the priesthood. Do you know him to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people, and upon the recommendation of those responsible for his formation, I testify that he has been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and our Savior Jesus Christ, we choose Dennis Jones, our brother, for the order of the priesthood. Thanks be to God. Thank God for gathering us as one community of faith to be witnesses of this wonderful act of God, a manifestation of God's caring for the Christian community, the trust that God places on weak, sinful human beings like all of us, uh, trusting us and trusting to us a mission a mission which is really Jesus' mission. So who are we to be asked to join Jesus? But God in God's mercy, God's kindness, entrusts it truly to all of us. And today we shall witness the calling to a lifetime of service to the church as presbyter, no, given to DJ. Uh, DJ, I know this is not your first choice for the date of the ordination, but you had to adjust to my availability. I'm sorry you are getting ordained on Holy Week, <laughs> which is, uh, well, a journey towards Calvary. No, so, uh, see you in Jerusalem. <laughs> But even if it is not Holy Week, what is Christian life? We are all we're walking towards Jerusalem. That's a beautiful greeting. See you in Jerusalem. Where prophets fulfill their mission and where prophets are put to death. <laughs> the readings chosen for the celebration, I think enable us to highlight some of the aspects of the ministry of the presbyter set within the, uh, the Christian community. And here in the Philippines, we're celebrating the year of the parish as communion of communities. So let us begin our reflection this way. First, while all of our attention is turned to DJ, and I'm sure everyone would want to have a photo with him, selfie, he becomes the star of today, at least for today. <laughs> so you better enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. But the first reading reminds us that it is really the Holy Spirit who appoints people to ministry. 
the prophet Isaiah has this vision of the Spirit of the Lord anointing the servant of the Lord. St. Paul, in the letter in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, reminds the presbyters, it was the Holy Spirit who appointed you. There is no such thing as self-appointment. Ah, even among the religious, huh? No self-appointment. Self-appointment is a disaster. It is the Holy Spirit that appoints. I could end there. <laughs> uh, and that's the meaning of the word Christos, Christ, anointed by the Holy Spirit. And as anointed by the Holy Spirit, you do not go where you want to go. You are sent. The Holy Spirit has anointed me and God sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to the lowly, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, release to the prisoners. They are all mission, sent. You do not go there because it is my project. No, you are sent by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So it is not a personal project. It is God's mission in which people are asked to participate. But this is not true only of priests and religious all the baptized, we are called Christians. So we bear the name Christ. In baptism, all of us have been anointed by the Holy Spirit. So all of us anointed are sent on mission. We will not, we, we should not point to each other, oh, you do this, oh, you do that, you do that. No, everyone does his or her share as baptized. Everyone anointed, everyone sent. So DJ, please do not think you're the only one anointed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that will lead you to pride rather than mission. And it will be contrary to what St. Paul tells us in the second reading and also the spirit of the year of the parish as communion. For one of the major uh, aspects of the presbyteral ministry is to really work for the communion of all the baptized, recognizing the anointing, the gifts of the Spirit present in the community. And while the diversity is respected, they're all elevated hopefully through your ministry, to a higher level of communion. St. Paul tells us, grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. So he gave, he called some as apostles, some as prophets, some as evangelists, others as pastors and teachers. But all working for the good of the body, the common good. That's communion. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one body. And all the gifts being brought together to serve not my interest, not my person, but the whole body. And as a presbyter, you are expected to be an instrument of that communion. Do not stifle the gifts of the Spirit in the community. Do not be threatened by the presence of the gifts. No, don't tell people, Nako, ang gagandang kumanta ng choir. Matatabunan ako. <laughs> They will surpass my gift of singing. I will destroy your gift. No more choirs. 
I will lead in the singing. Or if a time would come that you are a pastor and you would get an assistant and your assistant becomes, oh, wow, popular as a preacher, then you say, you write your superior, I don't need an assistant. <laughs> I can handle the parish. Daming ganyan eh. No? Magkanya-kanya na lang. No? Kasi hirap na hirap kami to work together. Kaya parami ng parami ang mga kaharian at kareinahan. But it's a failure in communion. It's a failure in celebrating the gifts of the Spirit in the others and allowing the gifts to be brought to this communion called the body of Christ. You're not the only one gifted. There are many, many other gifts there. You don't need to pretend that you have all the gifts. Be humble. You say, this is not my gift. Let us look for someone who has that gift. You don't know how to cook. Oh, there are so many people in the parish, in the community who would do it better. And so, let, let there be an exchange of gifts all towards the common good. But all of it will happen according to St. Paul and according to the gospel when there is love, love. Actually, communion is love. And St. Augustine calls the office of priesthood as amoris officium. It is an office, it is a ministry of love. But not just any love. Jesus says, remain in my love. The love of Jesus, not our own brand of loving but remaining in the love of Jesus. Resting in the love of Jesus, you know you have a friend. I have called you friends. You are no longer slaves. Many priests feel they are slaves. <laughs> Many pastoral workers, religious, this phenomenon of burnt out is somehow related to the feeling that I am enslaved. But we were not called to be slaves. We were called to be friends. And when you are a friend resting in the love of Christ, there is no burnt out. You will always burn with energy and zeal. But that requires remaining in Jesus' love. Apart from Jesus' love, we would get tired. And we would even feel like, huh, ministry has been enslaving me. Huh? So you see people walking around with haggard faces. No? 40 years old pa lang, mukhang 80 na. Parang yung kanilang kabataan ay ninakaw ng simbahan. Ay, problema mo yan. Because your self-identity has shifted from being a friend of Christ to being a slave. A slave will want to be set free. But a friend would want to remain with my loved one. And Jesus, in Jesus' mysterious way of loving, almost begs us, remain in me. You are my friend. And love one another the way I love you. 
loving even those who do not love you, loving those who may disagree with you. For that is how Jesus loved. Jesus did not love only the lovable. Jesus did not love only those who agreed with him. In fact, he died for all. And you are expected to love, serve, and even die for those who would be against you. For no other reason than my friend Jesus did it. It could be the most impractical thing to do. It goes, against, it goes against the norms of the world, as we see, for example, in Syria right now. I was supposed to have gone to Syria last January, but I was not allowed by the Vatican security because of security concerns. Now how could you go? So they said instead, oh, you go to South Sudan. <laughs> so see you in Sudan. <laughs> but yeah, people ask me, are you not afraid? I get afraid the moment I get out of the country. But if your mindset is, remain in my love. I'm doing this for a friend. This is not work. This is not enslavement. And then you see how your friend is very much present there too, waiting for you in the faces of the refugees, in the faces of the young who have been separated from their parents and families. Yeah. Communion, love, not just work, not just work. And since you belong to this institute with the heart of Jesus, the heart of Mary, huh? the love to the Father in obedience and availability, and the love for people even sinners who have been considered brothers and sisters. Wow. No. I don't cry. <laughs> yeah. But what a grace. What a blessing. Huh? What a grace. And so this is not just for DJ and for the Yudists. This is for all of us. This is for the whole church. We hope that all of us would, like DJ, rediscover today what is the gift, the anointing of the Holy Spirit to me. And in my state of life, could I, no, be available so that that anointing could be elevated to the service of the whole body of Christ and the whole of humanity. And the source of my strength is my friendship with Jesus. I remain in his love. I'm not a worker. I'm not a slave. I am a friend. And where my friend is, I'm willing to be. I'm willing to go. Now, after that uh, frightening homily, <laughs> uh, do you really want to proceed <laughs> with the ordination? Huh? Uh, the Father General is here, the Provincial is here, the Local Superior is here, and so uh, huh? I'm giving you one last chance. <laughs> Yeah.
Aya, awo ha, o aya na witness u kayo, ho witness. Aya, yeah. But it is really a grace. And uh, don't be afraid. You remain who you are. You will not become Superman. You will not become suddenly strong and uh, fully equipped because of ordination. You will realize after a few minutes, you are still DJ. <laughs> and, uh, but that's important. For Jesus called and the Spirit anointed the true and real DJ. God knows whom God is calling. And His grace, His friendship will be your strength. Let us now pause and uh, open our hearts to the grace of this Eucharist and the grace of the ordination. Dear son, before you enter the order of the priesthood, you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. Do you resolve with the help of the Holy Spirit to discharge without fail the office of priesthood in the presbyteral rank as a worthy fellow worker with the order of bishops in caring for the Lord's flock? I do. Do you resolve to exercise the ministry of the word worthily and wisely, preaching the gospel and teaching the Catholic faith? I do. Do you resolve to celebrate faithfully and reverently in accord with the church's tradition, the mysteries of Christ, especially the sacrifice of the Eucharist and the sacrament of reconciliation, for the glory of God and the sanctification of the Christian people? I do. Do you resolve to implore with us God's mercy upon the people entrusted to your care by observing the command to pray without ceasing? I do. Do you resolve to be united more closely every day to Christ the High Priest who offered himself for us to the Father as a pure sacrifice and with him to consecrate yourself to God for the salvation of all? I do with the help of God. Do you promise respect and obedience to the diocesan bishop and to your legitimate superior? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Let us stand. Let us pray that God, the all-powerful Father, will pour out abundantly the gifts of heaven on this his servant, whom he has chosen for the office of priest. Let us all be.
Hear us, we beseech you, Lord our God, and pour out on this servant of yours the blessing of the Holy Spirit and the power of priestly grace, that this man, whom in the sight of your mercy we offer to be consecrated, may be surrounded by your rich and unfailing gifts, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand. Draw near, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, author of human dignity. It is you who apportion all graces. Through you, everything progresses. Through you, all things are made to stand firm. To form a priestly people, you appoint ministers of Christ, your Son, by the power of the Holy Spirit, arranging them in different orders. Already in the early, earlier covenant, offices arose, established through mystical rites. When you set Moses and Aaron over your people to govern and sanctify them, you chose men next in rank and dignity to accompany them and assist them in their task. So too in the desert, you implanted the spirit of Moses in the hearts of 70 wise men. And with their help, he ruled your people with greater ease. So also upon the sons of Aaron, you poured an abundant share of their father's plenty, that the number of priests prescribed by the law might be sufficient for the sacrifices of the tabernacle, which were a shadow of the good things to come. But in these last days, Holy Father, you sent your Son into the world, Jesus, who is Apostle and High Priest of our Confession. Through the Holy Spirit, he offered himself to you as a spotless victim, and he made his apostles consecrated in the truth sharers in his mission. You provided them also with companions to proclaim and carry out the work of salvation throughout the whole world. And now we beseech you, Lord, in our weakness, to grant us this helper that we need to exercise the priesthood that comes from the apostles. Grant, we pray, Almighty Father, to this, your servant, the dignity of the priesthood. Renew deep within him the spirit of holiness. May he henceforth possess this office which comes from you, O God, and is next in rank to the office of bishop. And by the example of his manner of life, may he instill right conduct. May he be a worthy co-worker with our order, so that by his preaching and through the grace of the Holy Spirit, the words of the gospel may bear fruit in human hearts and reach even to the ends of the earth. Together with us, may he be a faithful steward of your mysteries, so that your people may be renewed in the waters of rebirth and nourished from your altar so that sinners may be reconciled and the sick raised up. May he be joined with us in imploring your mercy for the people entrusted to their care and for all the world. And so may the full number of the nations gathered together in Christ be transformed into your own, to your one people and made perfect in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. 